Just finishing my workout. 201. 202. 300 more to go. Then I'll be right with you. What was it? 200. Was it? How many? One. Most goalies finish their season slower, weaker, and fatter than when they started the season. And if you don't want that to be you, keep watching. Welcome to this week's episode of Goalie Training Pro TV. I have new videos out every Wednesday at high noon, so make sure you subscribe. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell. Why? Because every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Duh. People don't know anything. At the end of the off season, the goalies that I work with say things like, my mobility and stamina are far better than I could have imagined, or I can't believe my stamina. After the first week of practices, everybody's bent over with their hands on their knees, gasping for air, and I'm like the only one that's sort of standing up right still. <laughs> but when they come back at the end of the season and I retest them, what do you think I find? Yeah, they're slower, weaker and fatter than when I left them. So today I'm going to show you how to gain momentum during the season rather than stall right when you're heading into playoffs. Let's start by mapping out how you are going to fit in your training so that you don't stall come playoffs. I do fully appreciate that everyone's schedule is different. I fully appreciate that your schedule changes throughout the year. I've been working with goalies and athletes in general for my entire career, so I get it. I know there are a lot of variables, but when we don't focus our attention on the problem. I think that happens a lot. Well, I can't I, because I don't know my schedule and I, you know, you're focused on the problem rather than focusing on the solution. Or as I say, sometimes you're focusing on what you can't do rather than what you can do. So we're really only thinking, hey, what can I do? What is the expectation? Because it's very different from your off season training. So that's another mistake in your mind. You think of what you did in the off season and it's like, well, I can't possibly go to the gym for an hour, you know, every day. And that's true. And nor should you be doing that during the season. What we're looking at is two full body workouts that really take anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes. So it's not, not a huge amount of work. We're looking at probably five or six mobility workouts, because one of the most important things is keeping you healthy. Stamina, if you're getting on the ice a fair amount, then that should be your stamina. Work hard in practice, play games, that should look after your stamina training. If you're only on the ice maybe twice a week, then yeah, you're probably gonna have to add in one or two stamina workouts, depending on what level you play at, but otherwise your your skating should look after that. So I just kind of mapped out like a, like a sample week schedule. So if we look here, practice, practice, game, game. Uh, Sunday is the day off. So we can put full body uh, one on Monday, full body two on Wednesday. You can do a lift on the day of practice. It's okay. We're talking practice. It's okay. Uh, and if you are like uh, in high school or whatever, then, you know, doing it at lunchtime is a perfect time to do it. And I know some things are a little weird right now, maybe with COVID, getting access to the school gym, that kind of thing. But, you know, that's an option. Then mobility, 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 optional mobility on Saturday. I think five to six mobilities a week is good. Four would be the bare minimum. But, it, I, you know, again, if you're look, lacking time, do these on your lunch break. And, you know, someone, I was talking to a goalie last week that I work with who's like, oh, but I, like, I, don't, I don't have any place to do it. Can we turn our beds into bunk beds? It'll give us so much extra space in our room to do activities. Like the hall. <laughs> the front yard, the, there's places you can do it. People might stare at you and think, what is that guy doing? I've done my mobility in the airport before. So, so there you go. <laughs> so that's a little way. Okay, well, what if, what if I have practice every day? Okay. Well, this, this all still works. You know, you can you can work out on a practice day. What if my team does a workout? That's another one. Oh, my team already does a workout and I have to do that. Well, what should I do? I have an answer for that as well. Think of what your team does and is, ask yourself, is there anything in there that really 
makes me better as a goalie specifically? Probably not. <laughs> I know what most team workouts look like. They look like there's some kind of big push, there's some kind of big pull, there's some kind of big compound leg, and sometimes there's a hip hinge and probably there's some ab exercise or like general core exercise. Probably Russian twist. Uh, so what that means, that's great news. Uh, because even though it's not ideal, it's still hopefully looking after, you know, high loads, low volume, getting those higher threshold motor units, which is what we really need to keep our speed up during the season. It's checking those boxes. Great, I don't have to do those on my own time. I can do those with the team. Then what we do is go in and look at, okay, what are just the very, the, the minimal number of things, the minimum amount of wear and tear that I can do to get the exact goalie specific work that I need to keep my lateral speed, to keep my quickness, my reaction, my hip stability. And then we just create a workout with those. So I'm gonna just jot out a, like, a, like a really basic in-season workout. And then I'm gonna show you how I would adjust it if your team does workouts. Sound good? Sounds good. Give me a second. So here's your basic workout. And in season, we would, depending on again, what level you play at, how busy you are, how fatigued you are, we'll probably just do two sets of this. So a single leg squat to tap. I'll show you in the lab, don't worry. Single leg squat to tap into a knee down vertical jump, tall kneeling bungee press. So this might be, this might be super set number one. A3, oh, that, I dinked that up. And then this might be superset number two. So tall kneeling bungee press, then my legs are getting a little bit of a rest while I'm working the tall kneeling bungee press, and then I can go right back in. I don't need to sit around a water fountain and like chit chat. Uh, then that second superset, oblique row, quick step lateral hop, and then rotary power. Again, I'll go back to my oblique row while I'm doing my oblique row. My legs are getting a rest. I don't need to take a break. Uh, and so two sets of that, it's gonna take me, yeah, with a warm up, maybe 30 minutes on the outside. What if our team already does a workout? If our team already does a workout, and again, there's good, better, best. So I think this is better. If you can do this, it's better. But if your team already does a workout, we're not gonna make a fuss about it, but you can cut out this one. I would leave in the knee down vertical. You could cut out this one because you're gonna get a big push for sure. Um, I probably would keep this one in even though it's a row because it's that oblique pattern row. So I would probably leave it in. Although if it's like push comes to shove and it's like, I absolutely can't do four exercises, it would be the first one to go. And then we'll keep those in there. So that's how I would adjust it if my team already did a workout. And typically you would have two different full body workouts uh, each week. So FB1, FB2, and those would change about every four, maybe to six weeks on the outside, because you can't just keep doing the same thing and getting better and better and better adaptations over time. You need to switch it up so that your body can get a new stimulus that it's like, oh geez, this is different. You know, it's like if you, uh, like when you go somewhere that they speak French or Spanish or whatever, you know, you, I can have a really good, oh, but you're like, um, bonjour, madame, like, uh, comment ça va? And they'll say, oh, ça va bien, et vous? And then you say, ah, ça va bien, aussi. And then <laughs> it's like, I'm out. You know, I, like I use those same words over and over again. Um, and so my brain knows them, but when it comes to some, okay, well let's, now they've asked me something else. I have no idea because I don't practice enough different words in my vocabulary. So same goes for your training. If we're using the same words, the same patterns over and over and over again, there isn't really that stimulus for growth. We need to expand your vocabulary and we'll mess around with the reps and sets and tempo a little bit too as we work our way towards playoffs.
And then the mobility, this is in your mobility. So then you also have your goalie specific mobility on top of that. And you can find lots of videos with on my YouTube channel, Goalie Train Pro TV right here uh, with other mobility routines. But that, that too needs to switch up every four to six weeks to give that fresh stimulus. In season, I typically make the mobility a little more restorative. We're still trying to coax a bit more range of motion, but there is a big restorative emphasis on it. So using things like L Doa and PRI a little bit more. Uh, if you are like, what even is Eldoa or PRI? Or you're like, oh, I've heard of that, but I don't really understand what it is. Drop a comment below. And if enough of you are interested, I can make a video just on, yeah, like what is Eldoa? How does it work? What is it supposed to do? Cause it's really weird. Like those of you who've done it, you're like, this is really weird, but you actually really feel something. Like when you finish or when I do it with goalies at camps, they're like, well, like that was weird, you know? So I can do a video explaining what that is. Just let me know if you want me to do that in the comments. Now we better head to the lab so I can show you quickly how to do each one of these. I will see you down. And I know when I show you these exercises, some of you are gonna be like, well, that, that just seems too simple. Yeah, they are simple. And so really they're simple. They don't take that long, but they give you great results on the ice. So there's absolutely no reason you shouldn't be including these as part of your in-season training. So I've gone over these exercises in more depth in other videos, so really just giving you a snapshot, but single leg squat to tap. So keeping your good knee alignment. Yes, you are using dumbbells. It is supposed to be loaded. It's not meant to be just body weight only. So from there, we're gonna go into the knee down vertical jump. So it's a little bit of contrast training. We're using a heavy load to tap into those high threshold motor units, your fast twitch motor units, and then we're gonna do explosive drill. So getting over that leg, driving up as high as you can, as fast as you can, putting as much energy into the ground as possible. Gonna have to take a little pepper off of this one since I busted the heavier resistance band. What can I tell you? I'm just a little bit too strong. But <laughs> this is your tall kneeling bungee press, staying nice and tall in your torso so you're getting a little bit of core control in that position. You also have to use your quadriceps to sort of keep you in this tall position. The oblique row gets you in a nice abductive position so you get a little length in your adductors. And then we can add a little bit of a rotation to it as we go. Keep that elbow high, not this high, but sort of as high as or almost as high as your shoulder. Then we get a little bit of agility just with a quick step lateral hop, quick step lateral hop, coming back just to work that speed and power and really concentrating on putting energy into the ground, moving explosive, being as quick as possible. What goes with that is a little bit of rotary power. So this is just a little super band that I have looped around my opposite shoulder because I really want to work on this rotary power. And so I might start kind of slowly, really feeling that I'm using my abdominals to help bring me around and staying nice and stable through my hip. But then once you kind of get the feel of that, like, yeah, I understand how I use my torso and my hip stabilizers, then we want to make it pretty quick. So hand, where, you know, where should your glove be? Where should your blocker be? Where should you be looking? And then come around. This foot I'm just kind of towing down because really I almost want to be able to get there, you know, and, and hold my balance on that lead knee. Keeping my hips nice and tall, not sitting back like I got a wet diaper on. If you got any and all value out of this video, now is the time to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, you should probably do that too. If you have subscribed, hit the bell, you know what it is. Uh, and I will see you next Wednesday with another new video. If you missed the new video from last week, what's in my bag? Uh, you can check that out now. I will catch you next time. This is the tall kneeling bungee press. Too strong, too strong.